Hello and welcome to Worship with St. David's on the second Sunday of Easter. Um, as we gather for worship from all of the various places where we might be coming together here in this worship, I invite you to light a candle wherever you might be if you're able to do that. I'll do so here. Remembering Christ with us. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. This morning, I'm going to read our Gloria. It's a song of praise. And if you have the, the words nearby or have them in your mind, please um, join me. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, and you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the defi definite plans and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law, but God raised him up, having freed him from his death because it was impossible for him to be held in his power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, 
You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and in his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on the throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Holy One, You are my God, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O God, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless you, O God, who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set you always before me. Because you are at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. A reading from the first letter to Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, 
Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are thou those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning to you on this second Sunday of Easter. From the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Sanhedrin. The doors of the house were locked from fear. Fear of the Sanhedrin, fear of the Romans, fear of despair, fear of panic, fear, fear, fear. There they were, the disciples, ten of them who had been Jesus' confidants, friends, and followers, minus Judas, who had killed himself, and minus Thomas, one of my favorite disciples. You know, he's known as Doubting Thomas. I'm sure you've heard of him. Let me tell you, Thomas gets no credit for being a rock star anchor for Jesus. For being, you may remember that Peter denied Jesus three times. The other disciples, save John, did not even show up at the cross. The women were there. John, as I mentioned, were there. But they did come together the night of that first day, after the women had reported seeing Jesus. After Mary Magdalene, in particular, said that Jesus had risen. Jesus was alive, although in a different body. But the men are scared with the doors locked. They're not about to answer that door. And Thomas is not there. And it's not that he is a weakling. Just several weeks earlier, when Jesus determined that it was time to go back to Jerusalem to heal Lazarus, all of the other disciples were saying, you are going to be killed if you go back there. They want to kill you. We're scared for you and for us. Only Thomas rose up and said, if Jesus wants to go, it's time to go. Let us go with him and let us also die with him. Well, as you know, they didn't die at that time. Their time would come. But Thomas led the other disciples to go back to Jerusalem and be with Jesus. He understood the big picture. He's an honest man. He's true to his feelings and he's true to Jesus. But he wasn't there that night when the Lord came to see the others. He wasn't there. When someone important to you has died, what has been your reaction? I totally get it with Thomas. He wanted, to, he wanted to be by himself. Perhaps he was so filled with grief that he could do no other thing. No doubt he was exhausted for being on the road with Jesus, 
from knowing that the one he served and loved above all others was gone. But weren't the others? Of course. But for whatever reason, Thomas chose to experience his grief alone. You know, I understand that. We lost an important part of our household this week. Our beautiful 14-year-old Australian shepherd named Toby died on Holy Saturday. His body had been failing him for some time. His back legs were getting weaker and weaker, giving out on him. His hearing was gone. He had become deaf. But he was still full of love. We called him the minister of hospitality on the street for years. He was the nicest dog you would ever want to meet. He was a beautiful boy and full of love. He even showed up in the peace cam a week ago, wishing everybody a peaceful week, a peaceful day, wishing everybody the peace of the Lord. That's kind of the kind of dog he was. But on Good Friday, Good Friday night, he became very lethargic, kept looking for a corner to hide in. He had trouble moving. He panted terribly hard. On Saturday, he laid down in the backyard and he couldn't get up. At 3.30, with the help of two very compassionate veterinarians helping him over the bridge, we said goodbye to him. And our hearts were broken and still are. I could not bring myself to talk with anybody except for Len and our boys for several days. Not the neighbors, not our friends. It was an intensely private moment. And I think Thomas must have experienced some of those same feelings. We all approach death differently. And I know that the death of a dog, even a beloved dog, is not the same as the death of a spouse or of a child or a parent. But I do know this, death is part of life. It's part of love. And it brings us to our knees. The more we love, the greater we lo the greater the loss. The deeper we love, the more we grieve. And that's what happened to Thomas. I suspect he was lost in his grief and chose the only way he could experience that grief, isolation and distance. And that's what all of us are doing now, whether we want to or not, in the middle of this COVID-19 crisis. We're isolating ourselves. We're distancing ourselves. For you, those of you who are not distancing yourself in the medical profession or in the grocery profession, you have our thanks and gratitude and please stay healthy. But for those of us who are behind closed doors, locked doors, we still experience grief, denial, and fear. The disciples were behind their doors because they were scared. Many of us are scared these days. But Jesus found them right where they were and love them just as they were. When Thomas wasn't there that first Sunday, he, Jesus came back the next week. Knowing Thomas's demand to put his fingers in his, Jesus's side and hands, Jesus said, here, go for it. That's who you are and I love you with all your questions and all your skepticism. Thomas believed because he had faith to start with. And so do we, and that is what is making this week a bit easier with Toby. I believe that Toby is with God and that we will see him again. Pope Pius VI once said to a distraught boy who had lost his dog, one day we will see our animals again in the eternity of Christ. Paradise is open to all of God's creatures. Like Thomas, we come to our beliefs through the hard experiences of life. God gives us our brains and our hearts to help answer the questions and the challenging times that we face in this life. We are not alone behind our locked doors. Jesus will come to us despite what we must do to fight this virus. Whether we have lost a pet or a loved one, whether we are at home alone or in a hospital bed, whether we are fortunate enough to be in isolation with those we love, or whether those we love are separated from us through a great physical distance, God will connect us. Jesus will bring us together in ways that we can't see, but that we are called to trust. Jesus loves us in these trying times, as always. Look for signs of the Spirit, signs of God as they surround you in this time. 
For until that day and beyond that day, when we join our beloved animals and ancestors and all the saints of God, until and beyond that day when we too have finished that race, the great race of love and life and yes, death and sorrow on this earth, we are surrounded by the love of Christ. The tunnel may seem gray right now, but it is lighted by Christ, for he is the light. He is the light beside us, and he is indeed the light at the end of the tunnel. May you know that love now and always. All this we say in God's name. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people with the response, Glory and praise to you, O living God. Through resurrection from the dead, God has given us new birth. Let us offer prayers to God for the living hope of all the world. From peace from on high and for our salvation we pray. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For the peace and healing of the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, we pray. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For this holy gathering, that we be bound together in spirit and life, even when we cannot be together in person, we pray. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For Michael and Brian, our bishops, for Bishop-elect Craig, for priests, deacons, and all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God, we pray. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For the world and its leaders, our nation and its people, for wisdom and cooperation, we pray. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For all who work on the front lines, healthcare workers, cleaning people, medical researchers, grocers, garbage collectors, those who keep our cities running, and for the unemployed, we pray. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For ourselves, our families, and those we love, we pray. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For all those in need, the suffering, the anxious, and the oppressed, especially Andy, Dave, Sherry, Jim, Marie, William, Mary Jo, Jack, Pam, Sean, Don, Dolores, Andrea, Christina, Families Moving Forward Families, Dan, Dick, Allison, Anne, David, Pamela, Bob, Linda, Dale, Joan, Renee, George, Vicki, Mary, David, Nancy, John, Amara, Kathy, Sandy, Connie, and Sheila, travelers and prisoners, for those without homes, for the victims of COVID-19, the dying and the dead, especially Phil Manning. We pray glory and praise to you, O living God. In thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life and for hearts of gratitude. We pray glory and praise to you, O living God. Remembering David and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ, we pray. Glory and praise to you, O living God. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who gives us eternal peace through Jesus Christ. Hear our prayers, which we offer in the hope of glory, and breathe your Holy Spirit upon us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Peace be with you, my St. David's family. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace 
Let us pray together those words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Since we are not able to gather together around the table and share the bread and the wine, we'll offer this prayer, this blessing, um, remembering the Eucharistic, um, the Eucharistic sac sacrament that, that unites us one to another. And it'll be so wonderful to be back together once we're able to do that. But in the meantime, I offer this blessing. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart, cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And as we depart from one another this day, I offer this blessing. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellent and if excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier be with you this day and always. Amen. Sing ye faithful, sing with gladness, wake your nobler, sweeter strain. With the praises of your Savior, let his house resound again. In that all your music honor and your songs exalt his reign. Sing how he came forth from heaven, bowed himself to Bethlehem's gate, stooped to wear the servant's vesture, bore the paint across the grave. Till the appointed work be done.